Hello everyone and welcome to day nine in our travel in the book of Matthew. I'm so glad that you joined me. Uh, I'm just sitting along the Mississippi River. Um, as you all know, we had a little bit of snow last night, but it's melting quickly. Um, I have to go to an appointment, so I thought this would be a beautiful spot for us to read the ninth chapter of Matthew together. Um, I kind of want to give you a little bit of heads up. We're going to have a couple of parables in here, and if you're unfamiliar with what a parable is, uh, I just want you to know that it's, it's something that Jesus says. What he's doing is he's teaching us um, just a daily life lesson about a spiritual truth and what it's going to be uh, how he tells us uh, in something that we're doing just in our everyday life. And you'll get it when we get close and I'll give you it's a parable. Um, it teaches us a spiritual truth that he has for us. And... Um, this is what it says here in my, little, in my little Bible here. It says, Jesus often told parables to provide an understanding of life, especially in the life in God's kingdom. 35% of all gospel teachings are written in parables. And uh, so if, if you don't get parables uh, or it doesn't seem to make sense to you, then you are actually missing one third of what Jesus said. And we know that what Jesus said is in red. So think about that. If you don't understand it, you should figure it out because Jesus said it. He doesn't, he's not one to just waste words. And so we, we really do want to understand those things. And they're just going to be daily lessons for spiritual um, truths is what it is. So let's go ahead and begin with a few of our parables. And, uh, you know, a little disclaimer, he's going to do some healing again. And, uh, and begin in chapter 9, Matthew. Jesus stepped into the boat and crossed over and came to his own town. Some men brought him to a paralyzed man lying on a mat. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. At that time, some of the teachers of the law said to themselves, This fellowship is blasphemy. Knowing their thoughts, this is what Jesus said. <clears throat> Why do you entertain evil thoughts in your hearts, which is easier to say your sins are forgiven or to say get up and walk but i want you to know that the son of man has authority on earth to forgive sins so he said to the paralyzed man get up take your mat and go home then the crowd got up and went home and when the crowd saw this they were filled with awe and they praised god who had given such authority to man as jesus went on from there he saw a man named matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth and he said, follow me. And Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinner. And then John's disciples came and asked him, How is it that we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus answered, How can the guest of the bridegroom mourn while he is with them? The time will come from the bridegroom will be taken from them. And when will they fast? No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch will pull away from the garment, making the tear worse. Neither do people pour new wineskins into old wineskins, and if they do, the skin will burst and the wine will run out, and the wineskins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins, and both are preserved. And that was a parable. While he was saying this, a, a synagogue leader came and knelt before him and said, My daughter has just died, but come and put your hands on her and she will live. So Jesus got up and went with him, and so did his disciples. Just then a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years came up behind him and touched the edge of her cloak. She said to herself, If I only touch his cloak, I will be healed. Jesus turned and he saw her. Take heart, daughter. He said, your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed at that moment. When Jesus saw the synagogue leader's house and saw the noisy crowd and people playing pipes, he said, go away. The girl is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. And after the crowd had been put outside, he went in and he took the girl by the hand 
and she got up. News of this spread throughout all the region. As Jesus went out from there, two blind men followed him, calling out, Have mercy on us, son of David. And when he had gone indoors, the blind men came to him, and he asked them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? Yes, Lord, they replied. And when he touched their eyes and said, According to your faith, let it be done to you. And their sight was restored. Jesus warned them sternly, See that no one knows about this. And they all went out and spread the news about him all over the region. While they were going out, a man who was demon-possessed and could not talk was brought to Jesus. And when the demon was driven out, the man who had been mute spoke. And the crowd was amazed and said, Nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, It is the prince of demons that drives out the demon. And Jesus went all through the towns and the villages, teaching in the synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. And when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they harassed and they were helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. And that ends chapter 9. There, there's a lot going on in there. Um, this has been a really, like a busy uh, book. It, it's very fast moving. Uh, the, it just goes from one thing to the next. Where we were before in Acts, it seemed like a continuing story. But this is different. It's taught, you know, it's the life of Jesus. He, and he didn't sit around. He only had a few years once, um, you know, he decided to let people know exactly who he was. Um, though what really stuck with me was uh, in chapter 20. And it talks about the woman that had been bleeding or hemorrhaging for 12 years. And I'm just going to read that kind of quick again. It says uh, in 20, just then a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years came up behind uh, him, who is Jesus, and touched the edge of his cloak. And she said to herself, if I only touch his cloak, I will be healed. Jesus turned and he saw her. And this is the only time this is ever said in the word of God. It says, take heart, daughter. It's the only time he ever called him a woman a da his daughter. And he said, your faith has healed you. I love that. I just love that. And the woman was healed at that moment. Now, I've read in some different places where it says, well, we're not really sure she was healed. It says she was healed at that moment. Or some translations say immediately. Well, that means she was healed immediately. And um, I wanted to kind of tell you a little bit about this woman and um, and just give you a little background about her. So for 12 years, this woman had suffered with chronic hemorrhaging and visiting physician, physicians. She had been given her more pain, depleted her funds and left her worse than when she began. She had tried everything. She had become a legitimate cynic. Then she heard about Jesus. Her approach to Jesus was different than most. She came from behind and touched the edge of his outer garment, hoping um, no one, including Jesus, would even notice. We were not told whether she felt unworthy to talk to him, fearful because of her uncleanliness. And we know that um, back in Leviticus 15, it talks about that. So Leviticus 15, uh, 25 through 33, uh, it talks about when women are um, hemorrhaging or when they're, they're bleeding. Um, or concerned that there would be no chance of an audience with him in such a crowd. We are told that she had every um, enough faith in a person of Christ to believe that just touching his clothes would provide life-changing, and she was right. Though the passage makes clear that her body was healed at the time she reached out to him, that was not enough for Jesus. He wanted to give her more. Jesus came to an abrupt halt and he demanded, Who touched me? And the disciples were incredulous. What was he talking about? Then they, they saw that many, but he saw one. Power had, the power had gone out of him, but not his power had not been depleted. The healing had not been complicated. She was more than a hemorrhaging body. She was a needy woman. And when this woman contacted God, he knew and she knew through no, though no one else was aware, Jesus would not move until she approached him. Her approach was three-faceted. She came forward, trembling with fear, fell down at his feet, and told the whole truth. He gave her a foretold response, and he called her daughter, which was an intimate and endearing term in those days. 
and it still is actually. I love being the daughter of the king. I love being the daughter of my dad too. Um, he assured her that the body, her body was healed and by her faith, not by his clothes. It was her faith that did it, not his garment. Uh, sent her away free from all her anxiety, told her to go in peace and healed. She was saved. Her soul was, was, was whole. And it talks about that in Mark 5, 34, if you want to go back and look. Uh, between the healing of the demon-possessed man and the raising of the girl in this chapter, the woman's situation could be considered a lesser concern by human measurements, but not by Jesus. He stops for everyone. I love that. That's so cool. Uh, I want to just challenge you that if you want to go and look in the other two Gospels that have this exact same story, and remember that Mark and, and Luke and Matthew all have the accounts um, of Jesus's life, and that that's kind of like having a group of people together that kind of see the story differently. We know that Matthew's just coming into this in this chapter right here, and because uh, he says he stopped and he says, hey, follow me right in this chapter. Um, but that those other renditions, those other people's, um, what they thought, you know, what they think was to happen, if I'm making any sense at all, what what their thoughts were, what stuck out to them. We know uh, last time it was like we'd heard uh, two demon-possessed men uh, came out of the tombs, where in some of the other Gospels it only talks about one, and, and some of the reasoning behind that. We just don't know, because this is like if you were told a story and I told a story about the same thing that we've seen. But if you go into Mark 5, 25 through 34, you can read this very same story. And then also Luke 8, 43 through 45 is going to talk about this woman um, through someone else's eyes. So I'm going to repeat that. Mark 5, 25 through 34, about the hemorrhaging woman. And then Luke 8, 43 through 45. And just check it out and, and see that there's a little bit of difference in each one. But the story remains the same, that her faith healed her and that she had been hemorrhaging for, t uh, for 12 years. I think it's pretty cool. Um, she had several things against her. We already know that. We've talked about that. She was a woman. She was approaching Jesus at the busiest time of his ministry in a huge crowd of people. And um, and we know her bleeding was uh, as considered to be unclean. And um, But we can go back into these other chapters, in these other books, and read again the story of his daughter, his dear daughter, and the healing that he did for her. He'll do the same for us. You just have to come to him and wait on his timing. Well, I hope that you got a great amount of insight out of this and just looking a little deeper into the heart of Jesus. And we'll come back again tomorrow for day 10.